Last season, I thought we'd got Champions League football. However, if we go to the Emperor's Cup, you'll see that Hiroshima and Kobe are facing off on the 1st of January. They say he'll be crowned the Emperor's Cup champion. If we go back to the Joe one League, Hiroshima finished 18th, or Kobe finished 15th. They're not in the Champions League spots, so because of that, we're not getting Champions League football. Welcome back to Zero Tier, everybody. So after last season's heartbreak of not getting continental football, Dominic Brannon has decided to have a rethink of how he goes about the business and Mushishino United. Every single season we've been here, we've ended up bringing players in for either on the cheap or on through transfers, and then selling them for a big profit when we're in J3, J2, and in the first season in J1. Well, with £950,000 to spend, we decided to play it all and bring in a young talent, hopefully get better, it'll do a decent job for us now, and still get that big profit later on. Instead of getting all these free transfers that we were doing previously. So who are these players I hear you ask? Well first was Shohai Yoshida. Now a cut no, he can't play naturally at right winger and we don't play in midfield or AMC. But he's a good player and so we signed him as a regular starter. Coming in on a free transfer for Mahime where to be fair he was playing in J3. Iki Koiki comes in as another left winger. That option for us comes in as a squad player. If he doesn't do a decent job we'll just sell him next season. Inu Sugimoto comes in on a free transfer from Gunma after being on loan with them last season he was previously at Yokohama. He comes in as a really good player three star comfortability but he has been loaned out to Hiroshima for this season. Epai Yuruki comes in as our new regular start left back. He's basically just going to be like fighting for his place against Bone Texture who is getting on a bit up now and might not be able to be playing to the level required come next season. It was also a free transfer this time from Obata where he's previously had three £300,000 sales, one from Kumamoto to Matsumoto, one to Matsumoto to Machida, and one from Machida to Iwata. Yumetsu Kamiyama comes in as another free transfer, as another backup option at left winger, where if we can get a profit for him, we'll sell him, get some good money in. So Miyasa Suzuki comes in as our Great three prospect right back, he looks a really good player and he's probably going to be on the loan list which he has been put on. If we loan him, all good, if he doesn't he plays hopefully a few times for us this season. Koji Tono comes in as our important player striker, he'll be our replacement for Heiji Miando now that he's going to be 33 or 34 this season. He might not be able to keep playing to a required standard in this league with him now declining as a player. So Tono comes in as his replacement, I think he's a very good player, hopefully he can get us a load of goals. Comes in on a few transfer from Yamagata, to be honest it hasn't scored many, so it's a bit of a problem, but his star quality was really really good. Yushihiro Nakajima comes in as a new centre back, also a youngster, 21 years old, 2.5 star credibility. 3.5 star potential abilities, immediately been loaned out to Shonen, he comes in on a free transfer from Yokohama F Maranos. So Tokyo Moi comes in on a free transfer as well, it's the same current ability and potential ability as the past player who is literally named as escaped me already, he's also been loaned out straight away this time to Shonen Balmare. Kushiya Nakamura comes in as a youngster, he comes in on a contract deal, this was all direct to football, he could play left back, he could play left wing, Hopefully he'll get good, he's been loaned out to Toyama. Sumi Hayashi comes in as another young player. To be honest, the only position he can play for is his left wing, but we are training him to be DM. Uh, hopefully he'll get that game time at DM, or being trained to be DM. I mean, Ebeya Mitsumi, where he's gone on loan to for this season. Heisuke Amori is another young player, can also play left wing. <laughs> some reason we've got a load of left wingers. Um, but you can also play DM and hopefully he'll do a really good job. He's also been loaned out to Toyama So hopefully he'll come back next season being an even better player than he already is. Yuta Mitsui comes in as another young left winger He's not been loaned out, but hopefully he will get some game time this season unless we loan him out Yuki Ikeda is another youngster. He's a DM and can also play midfield, AMC and right fielder. He's not very good on the corner ability, but his potential ability is quite good. That's why we signed him, though at 20 years old he might never reach it. If he doesn't, hopefully we can sell him for about £200,000 like 
is value is suggesting. And then we go for the people that signed on permanent deals with transfers. First is Cherubin Mengo, he comes in on a £230,000 deal from Hiroshima who were relegated last season. He didn't play much last season, um, but he was a bit of a regular at ball down. Comes in as a regular starter, he can play centre back, right back and right winger. Can also be trained to be DM, which we are going to be doing. Comes in as a really good player and hopefully he will do his job this season. Another player that's joined us that is young, could get really, really good, is Ottawa Sanguini. He is a two and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential ability. Comes in for £32,000 from TS Galaxy in South Africa. He's already been loaned out to Raymere because I don't think he would get the game time under me this year. So hopefully he'll play good for the next season and come in as a 3 star or 3.5 star current ability player next season and really do really really well with those. If not we can always sell him for a profit. Alberto is a free transfer, 2 star current ability, 3 star potential ability, 21 year old, probably not going to reach his potential but we could always sell him for hopefully about £300,000. However, his scout report did say it was full star potential ability, so I feel a bit miffed about that. Gabriel Bruno comes in for £10,000, rising to £30,000 from Couture Leonardo in Spain. He's 2 star current ability, 5 star potential ability. He's eventually going to be the next main left back if Yuruki Pepe, or whatever his name was, doesn't work out and went for Baron Texture. Tires. He's been put on the loan list, but no one's coming for him just yet. And Oli Wickenden, another player from Spain, this time coming from Al Cayano, comes in for £35,000, where he comes in as a breakthrough prospect. Two and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential ability. He's English and Spanish, and hopefully he gets to be a really good player. He's trying to be loaned out, but if he doesn't get loaned out, hopefully he will get game time. Um, but he's also playing for the reserves and all that good stuff. And they were all the signings, well, the outs. Let's go for them, shall we? Zuya Kawada was sold to FC Osaka. He only played three times off the bench last season. And so we sold him £155,000. I think that is a really good deal that we got for him. Maseo Nishikawa was a free transfer while we were in J2. He played 13 times and scored three goals back then. Didn't play once last season, so we sold him for £100,000 to the Sagan Tosu. Shinya Tanaka, another player that was with us last season on a free transfer. He was hopeless with his average ratings. So we decided to sell it and we got £104,000 from Amiya. I think that's a very good deal there. Kicho Kaneko, who have been trying to sell for the past two years, badly managed to sell it, but £23,500 to Fukuoka. Played a lot in J2, but in J1, he just wasn't good enough. He did play well on his average ratings, but his average credibility was just not good enough, and so we sold him for a profit. Where we could still get a profit at him being 33 years old. All the rest of the loanees were zoned out some of the youth academy players that have come into us that were just not getting game time in the main team or in the reserves or under 18s as well as loaning out all the players that joined that could be loaned out that were going to be in the first team and maybe some extras as well. One of them included is Jafar Shawan who is our Bahrainian international. He comes in from us when we were in J3. He's had his played for us, but he's been loaned out the past two seasons at J3, so he's been loaned out again. For this, we've actually got a lane fee, which is good. If he doesn't get to that two star or two and a half star current ability by the end of this season, we will be selling him hopefully next season. And now you're probably asking, how well are we doing so far now that we're in 1st of April? Well, for the whole of preseason, we're actually undefeated, winning four games and drawing one against Amir. Our first game of the season ended up being a 4 0 victory against Tori. So, starting off strong like we did last season. Before then, getting some wins against Poro, a draw against Shimizu, a win against Nagano, beating Honda FC in the J League Cup first round, first leg, 5 2. Kobe, we won 2 1. Sozo Zaka, we won. Yokohama, we won. Who are, yes, promote back in the J1 League, which is good to see after the most successful team in Japanese football. Who'd recently been relegated. They finally found themselves back in the J1. Hopefully, they don't become a thorn in our side, but hopefully, they do decently well. The second draw of the season came against Nagata, away from home against them, before we beat Honda in the second leg of the first round of the J League Cup. In the second round of the J League Cup, we beat Sapporo 3 1. In between that and the Honda game, was one win against Uwara, but so far, it is going quite well. Nine games into the season, we've won seven and drawn two. 
We've massed 20 goals in the goal difference and currently we've got 23 points a whopping seven points in front of second place Yamagata if we can continue with this run of form we might actually do better getting continental football we might actually win the title which for saying we were in J3 four seasons ago will be quite crazy to even suggest or think about to be honest the second part of the first half of the season was a bit hit and miss we beat Yokohama before losing our first game of the season against Kyoto 1-0 which ended up being a known goal by Tsunatsu Seri. However, we did get through to the third round of the J League Cup by drawing 3-3 against Sapporo away from home before beating Matsumoto and then losing to Kashiwa, drawing with FC Tokyo, drawing with Yamagata, beating Iwata, drawing with Nagoya, beating Gamba Osaka and then in the Daily Cup round of the 16 first leg, we beat Kumamoto 4-2. And just recently, we played Sapporo, which lost it 4-3. Not good at all. However, we are still top of the league. With 38 points now. We're only a point in front of second place Kyoto. However, we have a game in hand, so if we win that, we'll be four points ahead, obviously. So if we continue doing well and not really dropping many points, which... To be fair, we probably will be dropping many points when we get chance because this team's not good enough just to if we go to season preview. We're still expected to finish 18th, 601 odds. The only two teams worse than us is Yokohama F Marinos and Totori. The other player joining in the summer window was Taki Okamura. It was a right back coming in for £150,000 from Yokohama FC. However, on the outs, there was quite a few, to be honest. Koki Kobayashi joined us just as we joined J1. For £275,000, he scored no goals in one and a half seasons with us before being loaned out to Kashua, where he was immediately recalled because he was not getting game time. Um, Kawasaki Vintale at Bolton, and it's a bit of a loss for us. I think that is the first ever transfer loss on a player this entire time we've been at Mishishina United, which for six seasons is pretty cool. Tomoyasu Suzuki who was that player that we talked about a bit earlier on he has finally been loaned out to Kagoshima hopefully he'll get good for next season. Yuji Omori was sold £150,000 to Oita now he was with us in J3 he played a bit in J3 I think he joined halfway through that season of our promotion winning season he played a bit in J2 last season he hardly played this season he hardly played as well was actually loaned out to Yukon before asking to be recalled, which we did, and through that we managed to sell him to Oita, which is quite good. We got a good healthy profit on a free transfer, getting hundred thousand pounds for him. Now Vigisuki Yamori was also sold also to Oita. However, we weren't looking to sell him. We signed for £160,000 in our first season in J1. He did really well the second first season for the quality that he probably was and the second season he was even better. Oito obviously took an interest in him and bought him for £650,000 well over his asking price of about 500000 we just said you know what give us £650,000 they said yes and we were like okay you can go and he was happy to go so because of that we did sign Okamura from Yokohama. Tepai Yuruki was also another player sold. I did say he would eventually be our replacement for Baron Texture over the course of this season and next while our young Spanish player the other one whose name has escaped me ended up getting better and better by low knees or just getting a half and a half game time. He only played eight games he was awful he didn't get into the side watch, he got unhappy, so we sold him for £325,000 of LJ in Denmark. Gabriel Bruno, who is that player, I just realised that I forgot to say. He's been loaned out in the end to FC Ryukyu. Hopefully he'll get good game time and get really, really good. Johai Kineko, another player that was loaned out, we were trying to sell him. And I think the, tran the loan deal has a possible transfer fee. If he plays a certain amount of games or if he gets an optional future fee, I do not know. Alberto, the player that didn't look too good, he's also been loaned out and he's actually been put the transfer list because he's not going to reach his potential three star at 22 years old so get a profit while we can. Iki Koki another one of our players that joined us this season on a free transfer he ended up playing zero times for us and got unhappy so we sold him to Valj for £220,000 it's two players Valj have bought for us in the same transfer window and then Shohai Yoshida who's been sold for £975,000 well, 
£875,000 rising to just under a million. And he played three times for us. He didn't do too badly, but he wasn't getting game time. He got unhappy. And we weren't going to sell him, but Fu Quoker came in with an offer on the deadline day. And we we're like, you know what? It's nearly a million. I don't think we're going to get any more for him if we waited until next season. So we sold him. And he's played three times, selling him uh, nearly 900,000, possibly nearly a million in only three games. That's not that bad. And one of our youth academy players, Hwang Song Ko, uh, North Korean player, he's played quite a few times for North Korea. He's only played two times for us in J1, uh, in, in his entire career actually, as well. He's been loaned out to Kiwancha. I couldn't change it, but he had an optional feature for £425,000. So if he does leave, I reckon we've got a good deal there. Whether they decide to say, yeah, we're going to sign him for that much, I do not know. But yeah, I think we've got a really good transfer deal there, or loan deal, I should say. Someone who will be leaving come next season is Hurukazu Yamaguchi. He was loaned out to Kanazawa this season after being quite awful last season with us. He had a fee to join them if he played five games. He now played 27, so we'll be getting £180,000 from Kanazawa come the 1st of January next season. And we also had the youth intake. So Kengo Kobayashi comes in as our best player from the youth intake. 1.5 star current ability, 4.5 star potential ability. He's a DM and midfielder, can also play right midfielder. Um, we can train him to be right wing back or right winger if we so want to, or even right back. But he looks the best bit of the players. We've also got ones like Kazutaka Takahashi, who's a Sadabak, Yoshiatsu Hachimura, who's a right winger, Sotan Hirase, who's a left midfielder, Keita Kawasaki, who's another DM, and Takaya Okawa, who's a right winger. They're the best players of the bunch. Some of the others are also going to be added, such as Hamura and Nobibito Hanya. But I think this is the best youth intake we've ever had. And hopefully, in a couple of years, these players will be playing regular football for us or have been loaned out to get that regular football and come back an even better player. In terms of the rest of the league season and as well as cup competitions, after the Sapporo game, we ended up beating Totori before joining with Shimizu, losing to Nagano, beating Kumamoto in the round 16 second leg, so we're through to the quarter final of that. And then, unfortunately, we lost to Nagano in the Empress Cup second round 3 1. So I think we've played Nagano like twice or three times this season and we've lost each of them. And then beat Kashima before losing to Kobe, beat Yokohama before losing to Nagata, beat Arawa and beat Sozaka a whopping 6-1. And in the quarterfinal of the J-League Cup where we're just getting a bit hopeful for some trophies other than hopefully J-1 League, we actually lost to Sozaka 1-0, possibly caused by an Aguche red card before that we then drew in the second leg 1-1 one, one at home, basically seen in as to be knocked out and no J League Cup trophy for us this season. Then we want a terrific one after that, being Yokohama FC, Kishima, Kyoto and Matsumoto. Currently we're still top of the league with only 6 games left of the season. Shimizu are currently on the same points as us but we have better goal difference. So it's basically between us and Shimizu. Yamagata could catch up to us and Shimizu but uh, if we continue where we are playing and how we are playing and what we are doing, I don't see that happening. I could, I think we've already qualified for the Champions League. Uh, it's not guaranteed yet, but I can't see it dropping off so hard that we won't. But now the aim is to win the title, which would just be such a monumental achievement. And well, after the Matsumoto game, we actually drew with Kashiro at FC Tokyo. So unfortunately, we have dropped off two second with four games remaining, if we win every single game, I reckon we'll win the title because I can't see Shimizu winning four games in a row. If they do, obviously that's a disappointment, but we need to win these four games. And if we do, oh my god, well, we made an achievement of winning this league. Well, the first of the four games it didn't go exactly to plan. The first game against Yamagata, we ended up losing 2 0. First goal by in that, and second goal being this. Yeah, a bit unlucky, and that could have sealed our whole title race. In the second game of our crucial four games, we actually went behind at first to a Watton and made it 1 0 in the 74th minute. However, we came back quite close to the end of the half 
85th minute, we equalised. And in the 94th minute, we won with this fantastic strike by Tono. The penultimate game of the season was also a win. However, like normal, we went behind first against Nagoya, lost, losing that 1-0 in the first half. Second half, we managed to equalise in the 55th minute with Barrios. The second goal for us was a deflected, lucky deflection that gives it to Barrios again to score to make it 2-0, 1. Then the third goal, Shorey crosses it in and it's a good touch over by Barrios to make it 3-1. And then the final game of the season where we needed a win to keep our title hopes alive, we scored first in 6th minute with Shawnee. Second goal came from a lovely bit of a Patterson and Ando scored. First goal he scored in ages after really being off the board this season like I expected him to be. Third goal was a goal by Seri. Our fourth goal was a pass to Kimimoto to Kawaguchi and then a ball over the top scored once again by Seri. And then the final goal was Ando scoring a brace to make it 5-0. And was that enough to win the title? Well, no. No, it wasn't. Shimizu beat us by four points in the end. That loss against Yamagata, even though I expect them to be tough because they are third. But the loss against them, the draw against FC Tokyo, and more draws, more losses across the season where we're just not incon a bit inconsistent. Probably because our lack of title fight ever happening this high quality, this high tier, this high uh, stair just caught us off guard and because of that we lost it. It's frustrating though to see Shimizu and yeah they frustrated me because I thought after through the season I thought oh this can't go wrong and Shimizu come all of a sudden and ruin your day. Yeah, disappointing. But we go again next season. I'm sticking with this club for one more year at least. I think I want to stay with this club until Ando, Karatani and Sasaki have all retired. Sasaki I think is 27, Ando's in his 30s, the mid-30s, Karatani's getting to his 30s. So a few, four, five years maybe with Mr. Shino to try and get them from the 19th best team in the J-League for 451 odds to maybe about 5th or 6th, 15 to 1 odds or something along those lines. But next season, hopefully we have more money in the bank because of the Champions League that will be coming to Mushishino. So in the end, we've surpassed expectations once again. And if we go to the best players, the most played player was Takahiro Ito, our goalkeeper. He played, I think, every single game of the season and got 11 clean sheets. Most goals in the end was Koji Tano. So even though I was a bit dubious on whether he'd be good enough with him scoring hardly any goals, over the course of his career, he's really shown how good he is, and he's actually now wanted by teams in the UAE. So, me and I were able to get a good health profit from him, which would be brilliant. The second most goal scorer this season was Gaston Barrios. He didn't get many goals last season, but this year he's really shown his all. That might be because he now knows, knows a bit of Japanese, I do not know, but he's done really well this season, more than I was expecting him to get. So, really, really good there. So, yeah, so Sari got nine, Chida got a so did Ando, even though he's not been good enough this season. And yeah, um, we need to see a replacement for him. Tony can do that job, but we need a third striker now. I don't think Hajime Ando can do it, but he's sticking with us for the remainder of his career. That is for sure, because he's brought us from J3 to J1, and nearly, I mean, J1 champions. RI got seven, so did Kawaguchi, and then all the rest got five or lower. The most assists this season was Tono. So getting the most goals and most assists so you know how good he is. However, all the rest were under 10. So not very many assists to be fair. Uchida got 9. Shiori got 9. Arai got 8. Barrios, Sari and Kawaguchi got 7. And then Andrew got 6. And then highest average ratings. Tono got the highest average rating. And it was Barrios, Karaguchi, Shoi, Arai, Uchida, Sasaki, who's been brilliant once again, even though he's hardly played this season. But he's just, he's like a JFL quality player, but he's so good. He's just so overachieves 
in his hour drain that I just want to keep him until he retires, which I'm going to be trying to do, and then leaving to another club. Because this is meant to be a journeyman, you know. Sarri, in the end, ended up getting above a 7 as well as Caratani, another good player of ours, who is going to stick with us until the end of his career, as long as we can keep him, that is. If we quickly look at the three brothers that we have, Callum Brannan is at Union Berlin. He was sacked by Sutton United after being in the relegation zone. So Sutton United ended up finishing 19th, currently halfway through the season, I mean. And I kind of moved him with Inge Redditor to Union Berlin. Otherwise, he was going to go to a National League side. I thought, he's better than that. And I want him to be progressing up the table. I know it's a bit cheaty, but I'm not dictating my career. I'm dictating the two brothers' career. So Callum Brandon is at Union Berlin in Bundesliga Zwei. Well, at the time of him joining, we're in a relegation battle. However, now they are 10th. And Ryan Brandon is still at MK Dons, where he's expected to finish first, but he's currently 6th. So hopefully he does better than um, what he's currently doing and gets promoted for MK Dons. Otherwise, I could see him getting sacked as well. A bit of an update on coaching Badger's situation. We completed our Continental A license, currently on our Continental Pro license. We're now a three and a half star reputation manager, um, which is crazy at 40 years old, considering we only started this like six years ago in the game. To get from zero rep to three and a half star rep is quite crazy. But yeah, Shibuzu frustrated me. So if you have enjoyed this video, or well, like or trophies, that is, like the video. Subscribe to the channel as well for more FM24 content videos. I'm going to be doing this. I might be trying to rebuild in a different style. Maybe five seasons, maybe ten seasons per episode. I do not know. So hopefully you'll be getting the Chesterfield video soon. I'm having to re-record it again because I wasn't happy with the how I was doing it. So yeah, hopefully that will be coming before the end of FM24. Be able to expect all those videos over the course of the coming weeks and up into FM25 as well as this continuing until the end of FM24 and getting up to FM25 where Zero Hero will be making its return after the beta ends. If you also want to support me a bit more you can check out the link down below. It links you to another YouTube channel which is my second channel. I call it Hex. It's basically playing grand strategy games and map strategy games. If you know about European Souls 4 it's games like that. Victoria 3, Stellaris. It's Crusader Kings 3 and Hearts of Iron 4. If you know any of those games, the channel might interest you. So click on that and just give it a watch. To be honest, there might be no videos on it as the time of this upload, but I am recording videos for it and hopefully getting them out soon. And if you want to be a true Summer Hex viewer, you can support me over on Patreon. And if you want to join the community that is slowly growing over on Discord, there's also a link down in the description below for that. Anyway, I've been Matthew, also known as Summer Hex. I'll see you all next time. For some reason, I'll click progress. Anyway, yeah, bye. Hex signing out. Bye, everybody.